everybody. Welcome back to my workshop and welcome back to my garage. This video is going to be something a little bit different than what I've normally done on the channel. We're going to be doing a pedal kit build. The pedal kit that we're going to be building is the Two Kings Boost from Stumac. This is part of their rare pedal collection and it's a copy of the Analog Man King of Tone. Uh, which is a really hard pedal to get a hold of. They're pretty pricey when you can find them, almost as much as what the Klon Centaur pedals are as far as price range and availability. You can have a lot of fun doing these kits and come up with some nice pedals that no longer exist. Stumac does a few different ones. They do the rare pedal kit here. They do the Ghost Drive, which is a uh, Klon clone. Uh, they also do some discontinued pedals from some other manufacturers, like the Earthquaker Devices pedals. There's a couple of those pedals that aren't in circulation anymore, and Stumac actually had the kits for them with the original Earthquaker devices, PCB, and everything that you would need to build the pedal yourself. And I've done a couple of those, and those came out really good as well. This pedal will probably take about six to eight hours because it is dual-sided. Uh, you do have the two different boost sides on it, so it's a little bit more complex than what a single pedal would be. All you need is a few simple tools. You don't have to have a lot of stuff to do it. So we'll be going over those in just a minute on what you need to build a great pedal. So what I've got here is basically the stuff, the minimum stuff that you're going to need to get the pedal done. First off, you need a kit of some sort. And like I said, we'll be unboxing this one here in a minute. You need a good soldering iron, something that you can adjust the temperature on is preferable. Also something that you can change the tip out on. Uh, this one currently has a chisel tip on it that I use when doing pickups and guitar building. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be putting this pencil tip on it. Uh, that works much better with the printed circuit boards and the fine soldering that we're going to be doing here on this pedal kit. As a solder sucker, in case you get too much solder in any one place, you can just heat the solder up and that'll suck the solder right off the board. You do need some sort of tool sometimes to hold the wires in place while you're doing your soldering. Uh, that's where some of this, this is again, this is a Stumac tool. Uh, I bought it myself, I'm not sponsored or anything with that, but really good for holding wires and things like that in place. Of course, a set of wire clippers, some fine wire stripping tools. This one goes from 20 wire gauge up to 30, uh, so this one works really well. This isn't a must-have tool, it's a like-to-have tool. What you can do with this is you can center your capacitors or resistors on this, and then it's got grooves in it, and that way you can bend the legs over, you get a nice bend on your legs, and you can space it and make it even across. Just makes for more of a professional looking setup. And then the final tool that you're going to want to have if you can afford it, uh, if you want to buy it, if you plan on doing more than a couple pedals, I'd highly suggest it. And that's this PCB holder. What I always do is I just spread it out past where it's going to go. There we go. And then you tighten that down. That holds your PCB in place. And so this way I can go ahead and populate the board. And now I can flip it over and I can solder the connections. That's what's great about this little holder. Uh, it, you don't have to have it. Uh, basically what I did in the past was I just used a solder station holder. I put some rubber tubes on the alligator clips to where they wouldn't damage the board. Then I just clamped it onto the board and I can move it. But this is much nicer because it does hold it much, much sturdier and you can rotate it to get access to the board. So let's go ahead and proceed with the unboxing on, this, on the, uh, the kit. This is the first time I've had it open. I haven't opened it since I, since I got it. First thing you're going to see is the instruction book on how to do this. Great uh, instructions the Stumac stuff gives. It gives ways to, it shows you how to test, it shows you how to solder, it talks about the difference in capacitors. So as long as you have the ability to follow us, you know, a very simple schematic and have some soldering skills, building your own pedal is not a problem at all. So we've got the instructions, uh, got some stickers, which are nice to have. Here's the printed circuit board. Uh, so it's going to be quite a bit to populate on this. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff. Uh, and this is where the holder comes in nice. It'll hold it, and that way you can just turn it. But you've got the printed so circuit board. On this one, I ordered the white powder-coated case. I could have got the case, just the raw material, but I did get the white powder-coated one. So that's the enclosure. And then you've got your sack, then you've got the packs with all the different resistors, diodes, and whatnot in it. Switches, uh, your, your potentiometers, and all of that goes in it. So basically this is what you get, this is what we're going to start with uh, for this kit. 
and we're going to go through populating the board, doing up all the soldering, and all the way through ops checks and uh, tone tests with this pedal kit. So stick around. Just want to say thank you very much for stopping by the channel. Please click like, click subscribe if you like what I'm doing. Leave a comment below. I'd like to see what your comments are towards this particular build and what we're going to be doing in the next couple videos on this. I'd also like to get your feedback on things you'd like to see different or additions to the channel. So until next time, take care.